Good afternoon and hello everyone around the world. Thanks for joining in for another episode of Alpha Simulation. This is the part two of the copy construction. This is going to be more exciting than the last part. Let's go for it. In this episode, we are going to install the overhead, the forward and after overhead and then we're gonna work towards the lights and I'm not talking about the back lights for the copy I'm talking about the lights that goes uh, on top over there and here uh, which will be the map lights uh, we will uh, start building the chart lights, uh, the Grimes lights, the CP wall lights and the dome lights so there is a lot of lighting going on <laughs> and uh, a lot of calculation because we need to calculate exactly the resistor for each LED what type of LED I'm going to use I still don't know and uh, also some of the parts will be 3D printed I don't have a 3D printer but I found through some uh, friends that I know someone that has 3D printer, uh, printer and uh, he helped me a lot to find this part so thanks a lot for, uh, for Liam if you're watching this uh, that was very very helpful so let's start before I can install the overhead, so I will start from the forward going towards the after overhead, I need to install this piece. It's part of, uh, of, the, of the shell from uh, Flyback Cockpit. Uh, there are some holes here which correspond to the holes. All I need to do is to uh, put it this way and start putting some nuts and all, and this will be holding position. The good job the FBC does already have uh, the pre drill hole in order to install, if you want, the wet compass. So the wet compass is here, and he will have two holes on top, which is gonna be installed there on the hole behind. And this one, the switch, helps you have to go all inside, so this part needs to be all covered. Now what we need to do, we mount this in order to take the correct measurement for the stuff that we need to remove. This is fiberglass very easily cut open. So I would like to cut open this area where uh, the part will be drilled. And I also like to cut open this area here where the switch will go through. So by doing that, I can install this directly there and you're not gonna see anything apart from the wet compass in the switch. Last night I provide to cut the part that I needed to cut. I tried to give as clean cut as possible but I made a little bit of mess here so I'm gonna wash it off before uh, uh, connect it again. Uh, once this is washed, then uh, I can put this one, the wet compass, directly into and now I can show you exactly why the cut was needed. So, I want to put this one here, it will go through quite nicely, quite nice fit. You don't see any part of the cut and this is the final result. So this one will be connected to the... Uh, below the forward overhead panel however as I said before let me go and wash this one before I put everything and another things we need to do before uh, putting the wet compass we need to configure this using the Arduino uh, this is not the typical module that you find with Ethernet I purchased this through GLB uh, website and uh, uh, I will explain a little bit more what needs to be done in order to make this uh, a working wet compass as the 737 realistic model right so we are uh, here back uh, at the computer to look how to configure the uh, wet compass the wet compass was purchased by GLB product it is uh, the most realistic replica I could find out there on the market uh, a lot of you actually created this by yourself so well done guys if you have the time and the skills so please Go and do yourself. I think it's a, it, it's a very uh, good achievement. But as I always say in all my videos, I don't have all the time in the world, and therefore I do prefer to pay for uh, someone that really done the work for me and I have the final product. 
Uh, the good things about GLP is that, as you can see here, it provides uh, um, a very easy instruction to follow uh, for one of the main uh, way to connect uh, the way compacts to the Arduino. There are different ways you can do it, uh, but uh, Arduino seems to be the most simple one. So first of all, of course, you need to purchase yourself uh, the Arduino. Uh, I believe it's the 2560 uh, card. Uh, the results from mini version by uh, the, the Mega doesn't cost much anyway. So I purchased that. You need to download a couple of software which is free. And obviously it's going to use the Mobi flight. And this is how it's going to be connected. So we have uh, uh, the compass motor uh, and this interface card which already been provided by GLB uh, Web Compass. All you need to do is connect the SAM to any input of the um, uh, Arduino for communication and then connect the Arduino to your external power and uh, through the Mobi flight and the Arduino software you can program to make the web compass work as uh, the real 737 web uh, compass. Um, one thing about important here is that you can apply 5 or 12 volts. Uh, I did try the 12 volts and it's okay, I don't have any problem. But there is a, a note here to say is that if you're having some sort of overheating problems, it's better to use 5 volts instead of 12 volts. I'm gonna try 12 volts if I and I'm gonna test it. If I don't like it, then I will use the 5 volts as well. So let's go ahead, let's connect this exactly as we need to, to do, and then follow this step. This is my first time using the Mobi flight. I have to install the software still but uh, likely step one, step two, step three and so forth can take you straight into the final uh, uh, full configuration for the web compass. So happy to do that. The Arduino board has been connected. All the check has been verified and uh, let me show you a little bit how I'm gonna proceed. Uh, a lot of you are already expert in Arduino and Mobi Flight and everything, uh, but just for the sake of people never done this, so this is the Arduino Mega 2560 board. It allows a lot of input and output. Uh, you can have uh, two different uh, power supplies, so it can either give, be given by the USB, which you also use to program uh, the Arduino through your PC, or you can have an external power supplies. So the moment the way is connected is I do have uh, the USB connected which is going to be uh, providing the power they need and also the connection to my PC for the program. I'm having, I'm taking the ground and the plus 5 voltage to go to the little control card, interface card to the motor. Uh, at the moment I'm using 5 volts. Uh, let's see how the motor works. If I need more then I can uh, go up to 12 volts but for 12 volts i cannot get it from arduino arduino only go up to 5 volts from my understanding if something i need to uh, create some sort of different power supplies and connect it there but for the moment this is fine now i also connect four uh, uh, output here that goes into the input to interface card you can choose any output you need at uh, the moment i'm using number two three four and five uh, as long as you uh, use the same output when you control, uh, when you uh, configure your Arduino and Mobi flights, then it's okay. If you change the number here, it has to be changed also when you connect. So all these uh, will provide me uh, the connection that I need to program and also the voltage, minimum voltage, 5 volts needed for, um, for the motor. One thing to pay attention is then if you purchase this or any other wet compass, because the uh, motor will rotate and is connected to the floor here, if you keep it this way, uh, it can damage. So the best way when you when you test, make sure it doesn't touch. You can you can hold it and see if this one rotate or perhaps uh, hang somewhere. So now all I need to do is to configure uh, the Arduino and give the stop command in order for this to work properly. So let's do that. Uh, let's start. So you go into set in Arduino, Mobifly, sorry. Uh, you need to download the more Mobifly the Arduino, go into setting and then uh, into the module we, uh, we we have already added the 737 compass. Uh, or, originally when you connect the power it will ask you to upload the Mobifly uh, firmware to the Arduino. You say ok, everything is done and then this one already come up. Then you Add a device, uh, uh, it shows 737 compass because already give the name uh, 
and then automatically should pick up the pin needed so in this case my uh, these are the Arduino pin 2, 3, 4 and 5 which correspond to my input 1, 2, 3 and 4 of, of the my interface card for the for the motor uh, auto zero stay none this one firmware auto upload this fine okay so we do upload current config to module do you really want to upload the module yes so we wait until uh, it finish upload finish okay and I suppose uh, that's fine okay I'll double click uh, maybe I can maybe I need to create this one by myself so edit now here we choose so let's go through the steps here so use preset drop down whiskey compass so we need to go all the way down to pulse attitude whiskey compass uh, once select click on the use button and correct offset so use button and the correct offset should be show 0 x 0 to cc okay so this one I don't need to do anything type float now change the transform now change the transform data to dollar asterisk 16 now dollar asterisk 16 according to this guide is this is just a multiplier to make the stepper smoother then click ok then we go back to the we go back to edit I think something is different but anyway on display on display on this screen first choose your Arduino module In a similar way, choose the tab from the lower, so stepper. Okay, stepper 737. Uh, the second one down will be stepper, and the bottom one 737 compa, whatever you call it. Okay, so so far so good. Let's see. Yeah, there is only one. Good, good. Hopefully, I'm getting it. Step 13. You need to change the default setting here to 57. Uh, 5760. Uh, the next one is 2040 and 11520. 11520. What is this value anyway? Sim stepper test value 11520. Okay. You also need to make sure that the compass mode is ticked. This one I read uh, is basically your compass should rotate uh, all the way uh, when you reach 360 degrees degrees should keep going uh, and not restart from zero so this one is what makes that happen compass mode okay step 15 uh, next with the compass now fully connected use the move command button to move the compass to zero position so this is where uh, I need to pay attention because I need to hold my compass and at the same time uh, hopefully it's gonna move uh, somehow and select to uh, to go to zero so when you reach the 360 degrees which is also 000, align to the line that's where you press set zero uh, pay attention to the parallax error so you need to be absolutely spot on when you read ok I think that's, that's as close as possible I can get so set zero I'm gonna save the configuration and so I call it uh, 737 uh, compass config saved good so I suppose I leave this open let's start now uh, prepare 3D and let's see if uh, it works uh, I'm not sure if uh, so. It's no. It's still 
360. At the moment, it's actually 310. So 360. I don't know if there is something they need to do in order to activate the. Okay, welcome back. Uh, I took some time to see exactly what was the problem, and I think I fixed it. So, just for you guys, very simple. Uh, silly me, I forgot to just tick the box here for uh, active. Uh, you need to obviously press run, but I didn't tick this active program. So as you can see now, it's showing uh, 313 uh, uh, degrees, which is, I want to show you on the camera as well. It's exactly where we are at the moment, because in uh, uh, Lima India Bravo Romeo runway it's uh, 31 which is 313 pretty much so we leave this in run we can test now let's have a so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna apply a little bit of power and I'm gonna tilt the plane left and right let's see if uh, we can make this uh, we can see this how it works. So, if I remove the brake, let's apply some power. Sorry about that. I'm trying to to find a way to tilt the plane in a way that. Oops. No, that's not the one. Now, as you can see, I'm tilting the plane and it's rotating. Hopefully, you can see. I'll try to keep it nice. Let's give a full circle. Once you reach the 360 degrees, it will not go back to, uh, it will continue and that's why you tick the box as compass mode. So I'm pretty happy we can uh, reduce the power now. So I'm very happy with the, how it come out. And uh, let's stop here for a second. Hello, and uh, this is an update of how the building simulator is going. Uh, unfortunately, I have some parts that didn't arrive yet, so I was trying to work, but there is nothing else I can do. At the moment, uh, I'm uh, stuck uh, until the parts arrive. Uh, so I decided to go and continue with something else. Now, what you see behind me is the, are the CB panels that go into the, the back of the first officer and the captain side. They are... Uh, Two of them, they come together. They came together with the uh, the full shells that pushes from flight by cockpit. So these also come from flight by cockpit, and together with these, as you can see here, the screw. I have all the different panels with the fuse. Uh, just to give you an example, I have about uh, probably twelve to fifteen uh, um, plates like this. Uh, these are dummy. The fuse don't work. Um, it's just, uh, it's very well printed actually, I do love it. And again, they comes with, uh, with the CB panels. With the help of a simple uh, Uniposca white, I managed to write down all the fuse uh, values for each panel that goes into the CB panels. I uh, just wanna show you an example. So that's uh, how it came out in the end. Very difficult to find these dimension stickers, so I decided to go with one pen and write them down. Now the values are correct, I found the schematic for it, and uh, I think that's the best I could get, really. I'm gonna show you another example. So a lot of panels, a little bit of uh, steady hands, come up pretty good, I would say. And of course, when you put it to the CB wall, 
you're not gonna see much difference whether it is real writing or not. So all I have to do now, all the panel have been written with the correct value, all I need to do now is to connect this with the screw to each of the wall. The two panels are now completed, everything has been mounted, all the value, all the fuse has been written down, so I'm very pleased about the, the result. Let's have a look much closer. Starting with the first offset CB panels, we have majority of the fuse and uh, very pleased. The description is very well done. I try to write the best I can in terms of uh, uh, value majority is 2.5 so obviously with a, such a small uh, writing 2.5 is very difficult for the rest if you had to write 5 or 10 uh, was much easier uh, but uh, very happy and then we have the captain side so all we need to do now is to transfer this downstairs in preparation for the back side of the cockpit uh, construction We're back discussing a little bit of the wet compass and that's because I received uh, the final parts that I needed in order to install this completely into my simulator. One of the parts I was trying to uh, receive it's a USB cable, a simple USB cable, uh, very cheap, one of the cheapest and I'll tell you why. Uh, this is the interface card that will go, will connect my wet compass to the uh, Arduino and uh, uh, from for Arduino, I will use the, the some uh, connector like this, and I will uh, install them correctly, and everything it will be fine now. But I also need to provide uh, at least five volts, between five and twelve volts, to the interface card. And the reason for that is because if I provide the power from the Arduino itself, uh, as we saw before, uh, it was not working very well. So this needs to be to have uh, uh, separate uh, power supplies in order to uh, connect the motor and allow the motor to work properly. So what I come up with is a standard USB. I wanted to power the 5 volts through the USB because I have a lot of spare USB ports and uh, they provide the correct voltage they need and a simple uh, stable uh, voltage as well. Uh, I bought a cheap one and uh, I cut the the uh, connector from the other side. Now when you cut there are four uh, wire and two will be the green and the white and this is the data wire. What you need is the, the black and the red which is positive and negative for the 5 volts. So this one I will cut completely as I don't need it. Now these two will be sold directly into the interface with each shrink covered by each shrink as well and um, uh, we, we're gonna test now, so what I, I can show you how easily can be done. I'm just gonna I'll put this between so that there is no. So I'm gonna connect, and we can see on the display here on the multimeter that once you connect this, it will give you the correct power you need. And as you can see, I will zoom a little bit for you guys. As you can see, it's giving me a 5.22 volts. For the Arduino board, I also purchased this plastic case. This is where the Arduino will be fitted, so it, it, it protects from, uh, from, from everything else outside. And uh, finally, we can then install the wet compass nice, easy, everything will be covered. We just uh, completed, connected the wire, everything is solid, stable, I just tested, it works fine now. Each shrink is there, so everything is protected. One less thing to do for this wet compass to be completed, and that's providing the voltage to the LED, which is 12 volts. So there are two LED, one in each side of the wet compass, that you can simply turn on and off from the switch 
and they require 12 volts. Uh, there is already the resistor in series for each LED, so I don't have to do anything. I can just connect it through 12 volts and it should be work fine. Now, I would love to have uh, the same similar setting for USB connected to 12 volts, but I cannot do the same because USB can only give you 5 volts of output. And I also have a lot of 12 volts connected to my simulator. There are a lot of boards that work at 12 volts. So simply I can connect from one of those boards, but that means I have to reopen some of the module, uh, unscrew, find the cable, try to solder over there, extend. Uh, it's a little bit messy at the moment. Uh, so I found another idea. Uh, I noticed that when I'm installing this, there is the power supply socket that will go, uh, will give the powers to the overhead and the power is actually 12 volts. Uh, the power supply itself is big enough to provide the multiple 12 volts. So what I've done, I can purchase one of these. It's a simple uh, DC 12 to 24 volt splitter. Uh, this will be connected to the current what I have for the overhead. One will go to the overhead, which provide power for all the overhead, after and forward overhead. And this one, I'm gonna do the same, exactly the same as the uh, USB. I'm gonna cut, take the wires, and solder it directly to the positive and negative for LED. Now, to do that, I'm also going to uh, use some uh, special ish ring, which, uh, um, uh, let me see if I have it somewhere. Okay, yes. Uh, fantastic uh, each ring. Just to give you an idea, uh, you can see here uh, some, some sample. I have different color, different uh, uh, size. Now, these are uh, what you have here are uh, the typical each ring that you have that you can uh, shrink them using a heat gun. But particularly for this one, uh, there is uh, me in the middle you can see there is uh, some solder past so what happened is you connect the two cables together you slice this in and with the heat gun the two parts will shrink and the extremity will just hold the two cables together the middle part which is made with solder paste it will melt and it will solder the two joints together what you have in the end is one single shrink that can connect two cables together and this becomes very very hard i mean the two cables will be really really strong they are connected through the each ring holding them stable and also the solder paste i purchased this i think it's fantastic um, invention did not existed and i'm gonna try them it will be also easy because that's exactly what i need here i can cut this connect the two and use that obviously smaller size after that we have completed for once once and for all the uh, the wet compass and can be installed and we can continue with the cockpit uh, construction including the accessory let's go and connect this uh, cable through uh, for the providing the power 12 volts and we can test after as well if it works here we are everything is done finally for the wet compass we have our connection we have the power for both the Arduino and uh, 5 volts motor and uh, now we have also the power 12 volts for the LED. One final test downstairs and then finally we can connect everything and move to the next project. Okay, so I finished installing my wet compass. It's been a long time. Uh, I also had to create some sort of cover here because I was I noticed that when I was putting this, 
uh, from this side or from the first officer you could see the inside the switch so I create something with acrylic I paint the same color and I attach so it looks good all you have to do is to find the right angle and then uh, block it with the screw here and then we are ready to go next project